the Straw Hats are sailing right into a massive trap. As bad as things look for them at Egghead, Elbaf promises to be 10 times worse. The legendary island of the giants has been one of the most long-running legends in One Piece. And now, over 1,000 chapters later, the Straw Hats are finally headed to the mythical island of Warriors. It's only natural that fans are going to be hyped up about that, but we need to take a closer look at what we already know about Elbaf, because there are some big secrets that point to the Straw Hats heading for major trouble. We're introduced to the idea of giants and their homeland of Elbaf all the way back in Little Garden. This is only the second island on the Grand Line for the Straw Hats, almost as close to the start of their story as you can get. And the first island is Whiskey Peak, a pretty normal outlaw town, not too different from Logetown. Little Garden is where things really start getting crazy for the Straw Hats. Dory and Brogy are our first look at giant culture, both members of the giant warrior pirates, and they've been fighting for 100 years, all because a little girl asked them who caught the bigger fish. The pair are both about 160 years old, and that's apparently the peak of life for a giant. While they're good friends, they take their duel extremely seriously. Even after the Straw Hats leave Little Garden, we see Dory and Brogy continuing to fight after the two-year time skip. They might be friends, but that wasn't enough to end things. Their honor's more serious than that. Let's go back to the pirate thing, though. The giant warrior pirates calling themselves that kind of implies that giant pirates aren't very common. We've seen a ton of pirates all over the Grand Line, but there's only one other giant who we've seen sailing with normal pirates. San Juan Wolf, an infamous criminal. That's changed recently. Harudin and some other young giants joined up with Buggy for mercenary work while the genius jester was being a legit warlord. Ultimately, though, the giants decided to make their own crew as part of the Straw Hat Grand Fleet. When they formed, Harudin decided to call them the New Giant Warrior Pirates. It's cool to see another crew from Elbaf, but this backs up the idea that there has only been one pirate crew from this island of famous warriors at a time. The Giant Warrior Pirates were founded before Dory and Brogi with another pair of captains. Jarul and Jorul leading the crew before them. This joint captain tradition is unique to the Giants, though there's been no information on what started it just yet. While there's only one pirate crew native to Elbaf, it's clear the island is friendly towards pirates in general. Not only is Shanks welcome to dock on the island, but Dory and Brogi are well-loved in their homeland. Oimo and Kashi spent 50 years working for the world government to try and get their captains back. With the clear inspiration Elbaf is taking from Norse culture, including Viking raiding history, that makes a ton of sense. They're some of history's oldest examples of pirates. Even much later, during the Whole Cake Island arc, Oda doubled down on this, giving us the name of one of Elbaf's rulers, Prince Loki. But there's one question that's always bugged me. How did Dory and Brogi get to Little Garden in the first place? Think about this. Elbaf is in the Grand Line. You can't leave the Grand Line because of the Calm Belt. Goldie Roger was the only guy known to have made the full journey across the line, circumnavigating the One Piece world. That means, to reach Little Garden, the giant pirates must have run most of the Straw Hat's journey in reverse. They've crossed the Red Line and sailed most of the way around the world, almost reaching Reverse Mountain and leaving the Grand Line entirely. Giants are a big deal. They went all over the world. And this would fit really well with real-world Norse history. The stories of far-roaming explorers who settled Greenland are pretty amazing. But what made the giants stop raiding? Pirate or no pirate, we've only seen a handful of giants on the Straw Hats' journey across the Grand Line. When the Straw Hats first met Dory and Brogi, they were awed by these mythical beings. Same goes for Nico Robin when she first met Saul as a child. Giants have gone from roaming almost the full length of the Grand Line to a legend people don't expect to see. How many of them are left? Still, that history of exploration could be helpful for the Straw Hats. That likely means that they've tried to sail around the final part of the Grand Line too. Even if no giant ever made the journey to Laugh Tail, Luffy might be able to find some information on what's needed for the last leg of their journey. Elbath is also known to be in a wider area called Warland, known for megafauna. It's not exactly clear how far this part of the Grand Line stretches, but we can work it out with a little deductive reasoning. Given the enormous mecha sea beast surrounding Egghead, as well as the surrounding area's winter atmosphere, it's likely that it's also part of the same region. If Luffy and his friends can just get off the island, the next part of their trip should be pretty quick. But that's the stuff we know. Let's get into something that's a bit more mysterious. It's pretty consistent that Elbath is the single strongest military nation in the One Piece world. These guys actually intimidate the world government, forcing the marines to release giant pirate prisoners rather than risk war with Elbath. 
Nobody in the present day wants to take a chance on fighting a whole nation of giants. But at the same time, we've never seen any signs of Elbaf's giants fighting anyone. They're on good enough terms with Whole Cake Island that Big Mom was planning a marriage alliance with Prince Loki. This was despite the entire island hating her personally for her actions in Sheep House and the death of Captain Joru. We've gone through multiple kingdoms in the New World, and none of them have been shown to have fought this island of insanely strong warriors. We had a whole plot about a bunch of New World kingdoms being pushed into war with each other, and Elbath never came up. The giant warrior pirates were said to be legendary back in their day, but the original crew disbanded 100 years ago. Giants are extremely rare outside their home. They aren't doing much. Has Elbaf turned to isolation like Wano? Well, they don't have closed borders. Do they not care about the rest of the world? Do they have something else to deal with? Are there just not many of them left? Well, there's already a sign of the real answer here if you're paying attention. Elbaf seems to fall under red-haired Shanks' territory as one of the four emperors. We haven't seen them fly his flag, but this is where his fleet assemble. Everyone there knows who he is and loves him. And that's odd when you compare Elbath to the rest of Shanks' allies. Almost every pirate who sails under Red Hair's flag is noticeably weak. Shanks has positioned himself more as their protector, a big brother figure here to keep them safe. Every time we've seen a nation have this sort of relationship with an emperor, it represents a promise of protection. Do the giants need Shanks to keep them safe? Is Elbaf still as strong and fierce as the rumors say? Or is it secretly way less militaristic than before, hiding behind its scary reputation and pirate protector? If Prince Loki is one of the rulers of Elbath, some kind of big deception would make a ton of sense. And it would make things insanely ironic for Usopp. He spent all this time looking to the giants as a symbol of everything he lacks. The strength and courage of a proper warrior. Imagine if the island only has a handful of people able to fight. Now, it's easy to forget since most of the giants we know come from Elbath, but that's not all of them. There are giant cultures that exist outside the Island of Warriors. Jaguar D. Saul comes from a nation like this. When Nico Robin asked him about the Island of Warriors, he called Elbath and his customs barbaric. It's literally the first thing Saul thinks to bring up when he meets young Nico Robin. He's probably not a fan of the stereotypes. And if there are other giant civilizations out there, perhaps living with humans, they could explain physically large bloodlines like the Buccaneers and Oni. Still, there's clearly some kind of cultural connection between the giants since Saul was very familiar with Elbath. After Ohara, that's where he fled, along with the library. He must have had some confidence both that he would be safe and that he would be able to find other giants to help him. And there's a good reason Saul picked that place. Elbath isn't just outside the world government's control. It's the island most likely to still have pre-void century history. Giants are extremely long-lived. We went over that with Dory and Brogy. While the void century was 800 years ago, that still means it's much closer for the giants. Only a few generations away. Some of the older giants can probably remember their parents talking about it. The people of Elbaf still maintain a tradition of sun worship. While the name Nika hasn't come up, they could have remained loyal to the original Joy Boy all this time. After all, he was one of them. Why else would Imu have a giant-sized straw hat sitting in a vault at Mary Joa? That's gotta be Joy Boy's hat. If any of the giants still remember the significance of that headgear, Luffy and his friends are in for an interesting arrival on Elbath. It might be friendly, but if the giants think Luffy's mocking their legendary hero, violence may ensue. Even if the island isn't full of Nika worship, it could still hold the final poneglyph. That is, if the rumors circulating about its location are in any way accurate. The widely known story is that the final red rock is held by a man marked by fire. While it's not literally what happened to him, there is a man on Elbath many people would assume was heavily burned. Jaguar D. Saul. While the red-haired giant's scars are likely caused by frostbite instead of fire, that's not something people are going to be able to work out just by looking at him. Saul is a historian and has been dedicated to gathering everything from Ohara. With the resources he has, there is a very real possibility that he's gotten the remaining road poneglyph. That would be a big change of pace for the Straw Hats. For once, they'll just get someone friendly to hand them what they need. But even if Saul is not the one with the poneglyph, it's likely linked to Elbath. The subject of burn scars, coupled with the connection between the giants and North Myth, brings up another possibility. Surtur, Herald of Ragnarok. The end of the world is easily the most famous bit of Norse myth. Predicting that a story with Viking themes will work in Ragnarok is a pretty easy guess. Still, it's absolutely fitting for One Piece. We have reached the final saga. The Straw Hats are showing up to a new place. 
some kind of massive cataclysm should be expected. Just look at the state they've left Egghead Island in. For an arc with this much buildup, they will need a threat worthy of the Straw Hats. The Blackbeard Pirates have already heard rumors of a mysterious sailor whose ship is surrounded by an unending whirlpool. Perhaps Surtur is lingering near Elbath, ready to settle a grudge with the Giants. But there's one other possibility in the cards. If Elbath is connected to Ragnarok and our antagonist is a man connected to fire, there is one more obvious candidate. Fleet Admiral Akainu after everything that has happened on Egghead Island, Akainu is not going to let the Straw Hats go. He's been stuck behind his desk ever since the time skip happened. But this could be the arc where he finally takes center stage as a villain. The Egghead incident is supposed to have repercussions that shake the world forever. Straw Hat Luffy justified one of the Gorosei and kidnapped the world's greatest scientist. This might be the Fleet Admiral's cue to finally get on a ship and take his men to war. If Luffy is on Elbath, most of Akainu's subordinates are going to tell him to give up. The Marines declaring war on the Island of Giants right now seems insane. They're being picked off by Cross Guild. They're on the defensive more than ever. They shouldn't waste resources trying to take down Straw Hat Luffy. But they just lost Garp. They desperately need a win. And Akainu might be angry enough to burn the whole island to the ground. And if Elbath's military force really is just one big lie, he might even pull it off. Shanks is an ally of the island, but he's supposed to be heading off to find the One Piece. He won't be there when the Straw Hats arrive. Luffy and his friends could end up escaping St. Saturn to only draw an even bigger threat right to the people who aren't ready to deal with it. In the comments, let us know what you're hoping to see from our time on Elbath. Bonus points if it includes Usopp. As always, I'm Slice Botaku. Thank you all so much for watching and have an awesome day. I love you.